The word of the day today is allegations. Every time I say the word allegations, a Canadian rock and roller drops a fresh memoir. Speaking of memoirs, Derek Wibley of the band Sum 41 just dropped his, and in it, he accused the singer of Treble Charger of grooming and coercion. Today, we're gonna get into all that drama, but before we do, hi, hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Dan Frampton. I like to make traditional, old-fashioned YouTube videos here on the internet. And if you comment on it within the first three hours, I will reply with your official three-hour gang welcome package. And if you make it all the way to the end of the video, you will be promoted to end gang. Much more prestigious. This video is brought to you by my gaming channel, Filthy Frampton, where I just dropped a video on the graffiti in Hitman 3. Okay, trigger warning and all that, let's go. So I wouldn't really blame you if you didn't really know who Greg Norrie or Treble Charger were. So let me just explain it a little bit. If you grew up in Canada in the late 90s, early 2000s, you might have heard of Treble Charger. Otherwise, you have no idea who this band is is. Treble Charger was being played on Much Music, which is our version of MTV, and they were on high rotation, okay? Everybody from coast to coast knew Gob and Treble Charger as like the Canadian pop punk equivalents to Green Day and Blink-182, that kind of vibe or whatever. Sum 41 came around a little bit later. You probably don't need an introduction to them, but they blew up to massive heights, global superstars or whatever. But before Sum 41 blew up, Treble Charger had much more clout. When Derek, the lead singer of Sum 41, was 16, he met the lead singer of Treble Charger, Greg Norrie, who was 34 at the time. And when they first met, it was kind of like a father figure, pop punk mentor type relationship or whatever. Not really super weird. But according to Derek, even back then, they were pretty much attached at the hip. When Derek was in high school, he was basically Greg's like gopher, he drove him around. In wrestling terms, he was his young boy. But Greg had much more sinister things in mind, because when Derek turned 18, Greg started to pursue relationships with Derek. For the details of this story, we're gonna go over to thecbc.com, and through this power dynamic, through this manipulation, Treble Charger, Greg Norrie, was able to get management duties of Sum 41. That's a level of control that I don't think this guy should have ever had. Let's go to the CBC and read from here. Wibley said that Nori's only requirement to be their manager was that they couldn't talk to anyone but him. Oh my god. Classic predator stuff right there. Because the music business is full of snakes and liars, and he was the only person they could trust. Oh yeah, you're being manipulated, Derek. This kind of language right here. That is the language of a monster. Don't talk to anyone but me. I know all the stuff. They don't know anything over there. I'm the only one you can trust. Okay then. Wibley alleges that the relationship between him and Nori became sexual in 1998 after he turned 18. Wibley described an instance where Nori invited him into the bathroom to take <laughs> during a rave. In the stall, Wibley claims Nori grabbed him and kissed him. He reached over, grabbed my face and kissed me on the mouth Passionately, I stood there having no idea what to say, Wibley wrote. Yeah, no kidding. Over the last two years, this guy in your mind was a mentor and father figure, and now he's pumping you full of ass and passionately kissing your mouth in a bathroom at a rave? My God, I could only imagine the confusion going on in this guy's brain right now. Wibley described the feeling as being very confusing. He said Nori tried to convince him to take the relationship further by explaining that many rock stars whom Wibley idolized were queer and bisexual. Oh, this is totally normal, Derek. Everybody that you look up to, they're also bisexual. So let me have a bisexual relationship with you. My God. The article continues. He was so relentless and convincing, after a while I just started to believe that maybe he was right. That is so sad, Derek. That is what grooming actually is. You meet when you're younger than 18, you put the pressure on, you convince, you don't let go, you're relentless, and then the person is gonna break down because the power dynamic will suggest so, and then you basically become a slave to the person after that. That is so heartbreaking, dude. I had no idea Derek went through this kind of stuff, and especially with Greg Norrie, whom I've met before, whom I've been in a car with, before, whom I've shared multiple afternoons with. 
I know Greg Nori, and all of this kind of rings true to at least his personality or whatever. It is still all alleged and accusations at this point. But just as a character reference, I can tell you that Greg is kind of the guy to be pushy, to be relentless, to show interest in somebody that looks pretty young. Back in, Greg kept pushing for things to happen when we were together. I started feeling like I was being pressured to do something against my will. Greg wouldn't talk to CBC, but he went out there and like denied it to other media outlets. Wibbly said he kept the relationship secret from his bandmates due to the shame and confusion he felt. Feelings that were complicated by intoxication from drugs and alcohol. That is such a crazy whirlwind to be in, when you're essentially a high school kid, being the whipping boy for a Canadian rock and roller, then he starts to take advantage of you, then your band kind of blows up, then you're on all these drugs and alcohol, but you're keeping it all secret. That is a mental health disaster over there. I started to unravel mentally and physically. I felt ashamed of myself for giving in to Greg. It's nothing to be ashamed of, man. You were preyed upon. You were a child and this guy was basically twice your age. So I think it is very brave of Derek to finally come out with this story to write it in his memoir. But he adds even a few more details here. Wibley alleges that he tried to break things off multiple times with Greg, but he would push back. He described one instance where he discussed ending things while the pair were sitting in Nori's car. I cried and talked and cried and talked until I had nothing left to say, Wibley wrote. That's when things escalated, according to Wibley. I looked over at Greg and he was fuming. For the first time ever, he started yelling at me. He told me that this was all my fault to begin with because I should never have said yes to him in the first place. What the f***? Man, that is so twisted. That he knew better than me, that I was too young to understand that what we had was special. What we had was love. Holy sh Shit, man, the level of manipulation and coercion there is absolutely sickening. Derek says that he sat in the passenger seat feeling ashamed. Derek, you have nothing to be ashamed of. This is your story and you have the right to tell it. And I think that it's very great and commendable that you're coming out and telling this story. And now that the power dynamic has completely shifted, Nobody knows who Greg Norrie is, and everybody in the world, and their grandmothers, and their dogs, know who Sum 41 is. The shoe is on the other foot. Derek's words have much more weight than Greg Norrie's words in this situation. And through Derek's life, he's battled demons, alcohol, drugs, addiction, bad relationships, toxic everything. And to have this at the kind of root of it all makes the whole story make a lot more sense, from my perspective anyway. And now Sum 41 are standing here in the sunset of their career, having accomplished more than 99% of pop punk bands out there, I think they have a lot to look back on and be proud of. The way that they took heavy metal and hip hop and infused it into pop punk is something that hasn't been successfully done since they did it. Treble Charger only have like one hit and it was only ever played in Canada. Do you know the song American Psycho? <laughs> no, I don't think you do. So my heart absolutely goes out to Derek Wibley right now. If you are watching this, Derek, you're welcome to come onto the channel anytime you want and have a little discussion with me about this if you want, or we can talk about simple happy things. Up to you. Either way, the olive branch is extended Extended. Come on to the channel for a quick chat, for a quick little interview, Derek Wibley. And with all that being said, that was the topic du jour. I've been Dan Frampton. That over there, that's Mick Foley the cat. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember about my gaming channel. Also, I have a slop video dropping today as well. Check out Frampton Slop, Filthy Frampton, or keep it locked right here. Until my next upload, watch another upload on one of these three channels. Okay. Thank you so much, take care, and have a good one.